I would be wise to take one day a week and add to that all out max heart rate work for 90 seconds at least. So the reason I mention this is that these are indirect effects on lymphatic clearance and blood flow. With a single jaw dropping revelation, Huberman opens the floodgates to a hidden realm of fitness potential where the mundane exercises of the past pale in comparison to this astonishing workout hack that holds the key to unlocking your body's true potential. Beautiful work by our Kendall's work, uh, lab, excuse me, and others. Whereas if you're just gliding peacefully through the pool and doing your mile laps a day, you get the the enhanced oxygenation of the brain. You get the, so what we call glymphatic clearance, which is at night you get clearance of the debris out of the brain is enhanced by daily exercise. Like a magician revealing a long held secret, Huberman takes us on a mesmerizing journey through this revolutionary workout hack, defying our expectations and challenging us to embrace a new paradigm of physical transformation. Avoid cold immersion, so ice baths and being in cold water up to the neck, uncomfortably cold, within the four hours after a, a training session that's designed to evoke an adaptation, either endurance, hypertrophy, or strength, because the inflammation that you experience from a hard endurance workout or from a hard strength or a hard or hypertrophy workout is the stimulus by that you're going to adapt to. With every rep, every sweat-soaked moment, Huberman unveils the hidden forces at play as this surprising workout hack unleashes a torrent of muscle growth, strength gains, and a physique that defies imagination. But what I find is every time I work out early in the day, I have more energy all day long, and I never know why that is. And it, it's because you start, to, most likely, it's because you liberate a bunch of dopamine and adrenaline from your system, so you get a long arc of, of activation and alertness, plus you are eliminating whatever adenosine is, is there, and so you feel like you have a lot of energy throughout the day. In a world inundated with fitness fads and false promises, Huberman's shocking workout hack stands alone as a beacon of truth revealing the untapped reservoirs of physical prowess that lie dormant within us, waiting to be unleashed. The cold water immersion reduces inflammation and can short circuit some of that. After four hours, you're probably okay, but if you can do it a different day or you can do it before those sessions, that's better. Heat, however, can be done immediately after training and it's probably beneficial because of the way that it dilates the vascular system and delivers, perfuses the muscles and ligaments, et cetera, with more nutrients. As we delve deeper into the intricacies of this groundbreaking revelation, Huberman reveals the scientific principles and cutting edge research that underpin its effectiveness, leaving us breathless in anticipation of the transformative results that await. But at a basic, in basic form, people doing push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, dips, um, you know, uh, jump squats, you know, basic load-bearing um, behaviors. It's actually well-established that cognitive function in aging can be assessed indirectly by grip strength. Now, why would that be? You have lower motor neurons, which are neurons in your spinal cord that control contraction of the muscles, that by releasing neurotransmitter onto those muscles, but you have upper motor neurons, which control deliberate motor action. And grip strength is something that really involves those upper motor neurons. And um, you actually can do this as a, as a test that if you're lifting weights, if you um, grip really strong. Let's say you're even doing a unilateral movement. If you clinch the opposite fist really, really hard, you'll find that you can move more weight from more repetitions because you're engaging the entire upper motor neuron to lower motor neuron system. So there's a chain of neural events there. So the idea is that people should be doing three to four days a week minimum. But uh, when you say minimum, there isn't much more room for upper upper limit, but three to four days a week of some sort of load bearing exercise that could be weight training with machines or free weights, but it could also again be push ups, pull ups, dips, um, jump squats. The ability to jump and grip strength are highly correlated with cognitive function later in, in age. I think, why would that be? Again, it's these hormonal signals sent from the body to the brain. From the ashes of ordinary workouts, a phoenix rises as Huberman's workout hack takes center stage captivating the fitness world with its ability to sculpt, tone, and transform your body in ways previously thought impossible. I don't think you're going to burn out your adrenals. I think you're going to burn I think you're going to be stressed too often. You're just burning up energy. And you know, we hear about fuel energy in the body, something you know far more about than I do, the utilization of fuel energy, but neurons 
And our nervous system have a sort of what I would call neural energy, the ability to focus, the ability to stay engaged. That's based on the dopamine and the noradrenaline system. And if you are chronically in a state of go, 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 and I should mention that dopamine and adrenaline, when they are enriched in our body and they're released in our brain, we tend to focus on that exteroception, things outside the boundaries of our skin. It's all about what we don't have going on now or that we don't already possess that we need and want. So they're motivating it, us. They are motivating us, but that being in pursuit is fatiguing over time. Whereas there are other neuromodulators and neurotransmitters like serotonin, oxytocin, um, things related to the um, anatomide system that are more about feeling content with what we already have or what's in the confines of our skin. The beautiful place we happen to live in, the people that we happen to have, social connection, they tend to be very soothing. And you know, for better or for worse, a, a lot of our success in life professionally and our ability to obtain those relationships and those things come from being in pursuit. But you have to think of this as a seesaw that you need to be able to go back, run back and forth on. Now, in terms of exercise, exercise during the day increases the rates of lymphatic clearance at night. So the reason I mention this is that these are indirect effects on lymphatic clearance and blood flow. Now, what about direct effects? The direct effects bring us to osteocalcin. And the direct effects of exercise on brain function and health actually come from stimulation of the skeleton and load-bearing exercise. And this is something that I think is underappreciated. When we do cardiovascular work, again, you support blood flow, lymphatic clearance, but osteocalcin is made by the bones. Wow, a hormone that's made by bones that's released into the bloodstream and then goes to the brain and improves brain function. And how does this work? Well, when the skeleton has load, load bearing, um, is load-bearing, then osteocalcin is released and it makes perfect sense. Why would the brain continue to support its own function if the body isn't being used? Well, let's say, how does the brain know that the body is being used? The body knows that, uh, the brain, excuse me, knows that the body is being used for load bearing work because osteocalcin is that signal. Again, the brain and body have to communicate and it's not like the body says, oh, I weight trained today or I did um, calisthenics today. No, it doesn't work that way. There's a hormone signal to communicate that to the brain. So this can be achieved a number of different ways. I actually think body weight exercises can be quite good. Um, there are a couple of online sources that, I mean, I think the incredible work that Ido Portal is doing, I-D-O Portal, he's big on this movement, he calls it movement culture, but this is, he's a, he's a phenom, but you know, not just doing push-ups and, and burpees and not that sort of thing, which are very linear but a lot of non uh, dynamic, non-linear movement. He talks about explosiveness, suppleness. Um, there are other features as well, um, but the ability to generate more force um, over time, it, per unit time, is the reflection of the, the activity of these motor neurons that, that reside in the spinal cord. And we have two main motor systems. So we have what are called the lower motor neurons. So when you're just walking around, you're not thinking about it, you're mainly in these patterns of your motor neurons are lower motor neurons are firing and engaging the limbs by making these muscles um, twitch by releasing acetyl literally dumping acetylcholine onto them and in the in the neuromuscular system acetylcholine at least in mammals causes um, contraction of muscles muscle fibers and then for endurance i learned something really cool so i i work out basically i go to the gym every other day on average I, three or four days a week i do that but generally not two days in a row. It's workout, next day I'll do cardio, next day. And the cardio for me is always a 30 to 45 minute jog, kind of zone two cardio. Andy informed me that to build endurance while building strength and maintaining some muscle size or even building muscle size, I would be wise to take one day a week and add to that all out max heart rate work for 90 seconds at least. So do 90 seconds, then rest, and then maybe do another 90 second all out sprint. I almost missed my flight going from Los Angeles to Austin. I did that all out sprint in the airport yesterday. So I actually think it's done for me. 